Welcome back. This is week three of our eight-week session. So this week we're going to take a look at the management process. So it's really based off of four steps, which you can see here. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. We'll get into more of the definitions during our lecture, but the one thing I did want to point out to you is that all of these steps interact. This is not linear, although you might start out and say, hey, let's do our planning, let's do our organizing, let's figure out how we're going to lead, and then figure out what tactics we're going to need to control everything, but they don't stand alone. They work in conjunction, and we'll talk about that when we have our, our regular lecture for this week. But these are the four steps that you need to concern yourself with. Next up, we've got three levels of management for most basic companies. You've got your top managers, and you can see the titles associated with it. Those technically are the folks that they make the decisions. You've got your middle managers, and again, you can see the titles. Those are the folks that are the link between top management and what they want to get done and, you know, the first line managers are those folks that are closest to the worker bees. So we've got three different levels of authority or management. They all work in conjunction. This is pretty linear. It starts from top to bottom, okay? When you think in terms of this, first line managers, those supervisors or office managers, they are not gonna be creating company policy. They are not going to be making objectives for the company. They're going to be responsible for the folks that are actually doing the work. Now, they're going to make sure that there's a clear understanding of what those objectives are and how people get them done. But as far as creating those policies, no, that starts at the top. So when we think in terms of content for this week, we're going to be talking about the organizational structure and those folks that go ahead and run the organization. Now, when you look at a basic organization chart, this is going to be one for a business that is all encased, where everybody's in the same spot. And you can see, you start out with one, then you go to three people, then you go to six people. Pretty typical organizational chart for businesses that are have they, they may have multiple locations, but they're all pretty typically grouped together. The interesting part that we'll talk about is the virtual organization. Now, you can see here, in the middle we've got our core, core competencies, finance, operations, and management. But then all of a sudden, they're doing manufacturing in Asia. Their accounting and human resources might be somewhere else. Anheuser-Busch is a good example of this. Their core organization is in New York. They have manufacturing all around the world. They do have accounting and human resources here in St. Louis. Sales and marketing is all over the country and the world. And then they have distribution and logistics from each of their 13 breweries. So we could call them a virtual organization even though they've got brick and mortar all around the world. So we'll talk more about that in our lecture. So that's going to do it for our overview for weeks five and six. Enjoy the content, and as always, if you need anything, please reach out. Thank you very much.